Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I want to enter the debate surrounding the end of QuickTime for Windows. Now, QuickTime is a multimedia framework from Apple, which until this point in time has been used across both Macs and PCs right the way across the computing industry. Because it's a framework, QuickTime has lots of elements to it. QuickTime involves a QuickTime player, there are also plugins for use in, in web browsers and other multimedia applications. And QuickTime also gives us a file format, MOV files. Or more accurately, QuickTime gives us a container format because you can store all different types of video inside a MOV file. Now, a few weeks ago, back in April 2016, Apple very quietly let it be known it was going to see supporting QuickTime for Windows. A number of security vulnerabilities have been pointed out to it, and rather than fixing them, Apple decided to basically advise Windows users it was no longer supporting QuickTime and they should uninstall it from their system. Now, many people who are expert in computer security then went on to put out their own warnings about QuickTime and to advise people who were running QuickTime on a PC to uninstall it. And indeed, for most Windows users, that is really good advice. Right, you say, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that QuickTime is still very heavily relied upon in the video industry. Lots of people are using MOV files, and these can't always be read by other applications if you haven't got QuickTime installed. So, for example, if you're using Adobe's Creative Cloud, Adobe Premiere and After Effects and so on, you're very likely to be using files that will actually require QuickTime on your system. Now, Adobe have put out various advice on this, more helpful advice than Apple, to, to be honest. And as you can see here, what Adobe have said is they've worked extensively on removing dependencies on QuickTime and its professional video auditor and digital imaging applications and giving native decoding of many MOV formats. But having said this, there are still codecs, in other words, still means of decoding video and storing video, which remain dependent on QuickTime being installed on Windows. And most notably, this includes Apple ProRes. Now, Apple ProRes is a format which is dominant in professional video. Uh, I happen to be recording ProRes right now. I record it to a, a field recorder and then edit it usually into a, an H.264 file eventually, but I, I work from ProRes. So clearly, we can't just all decide to get rid of QuickTime because if you're using most high-end video editors and you get rid of QuickTime and you've got MOV files, particularly in ProRes format, things simply will no longer work. So, what should you do if you rely on QuickTime files and things like ProRes files um, and you're using a Windows PC, which let's be honest will be most people in that situation? Well, my advice would be to uninstall QuickTime initially, but then to go to the Apple site and to download the latest version of QuickTime, which is version 7.7.9, and then to install QuickTime and to do a custom install. And to make sure you only install the QuickTime Essentials, not the QuickTime Media Player, not any of the optional features like web plugins. And this should allow you to continue to work with QuickTime files in your applications like, say, Premiere Pro or, or DaVinci Resolve without having to have the full version of QuickTime installed. And that should protect you against the security vulnerabilities that Apple has had identified to it. Beyond the need to uh, put in place short-term fixes and in time to, to change our workflow, I think the fundamental issue that comes out of Apple sort of killing QuickTime for Windows or very much trying to, is the fact that so many of us now do digital work. And we rely in doing that digital work on having fixed file formats, multimedia frameworks, which we can keep using over time, which we can have some faith in. And therefore, I think the real issue going on here with uh, Apple and QuickTime is not so much about QuickTime itself. It's about the fact that it reminds us we're becoming very dependent on very large companies who can take arbitrary decisions which have a phenomenal impact on how we work, what we do, how people earn their living, etc. I mean, Apple, let's be honest, is not a poor company. It makes billions and billions of dollars in profit every year. Apple 
could have decided quite easily to say, we will continue to have a media player for QuickTime for Windows, maybe a player that never goes online. I've never understood why all media players have to go online these days. Can't they just play the video on our machines? It could have made a basic standalone player for Windows PCs and continue to provide the plugin support for other multimedia packages. And that would have given people confidence to keep using QuickTime, not just on Windows, but also on the Mac platform. Because if you're a Mac user, you're doing work on a Mac using QuickTime related files, then clearly you're gonna get a bit nervous about the fact that PC people will be less receptive to these files. Right now, lots of us got a massive QuickTime archive. I've got about two and a half terabytes of uh, QuickTime files, and I'm sure that when I'm selling them on to people now and then, they'll still want QuickTime for a while to come. But clearly that is going to change. And so I think all of us should really reflect on what Apple has done here. You know, it didn't say we're gonna kill QuickTime in a year or two years or whatever. It just quietly, without even a formal announcement, stopped supporting it and left so many people, including me, I'll be very honest, in this position of going, what do we do? Not just in terms of the software we use, but even the hardware. You know, many of us own hardware that writes files that now can't be read natively in Windows without installing software from Apple that it no longer supports. And that's a utterly ridiculous situation. So anyway, this is me just getting off my chest these thoughts about QuickTime, but I'd love to know what you think about what's going on here. What does this mean for computing going ahead in our relationship with these big computing companies who we rely on so intensively, whether we like it or whether we don't. But anyway, that's now it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.